awesome news the ukrainian army took the ground near to verbova we are at the south direction where you may clearly see the advantage of our army so let's go to the timeline yesterday and it is today this counterattack shows that the ukrainian army is very capable even in direction where the russian elite forces are located hello my friends and welcome this is the latest update from ukraine let's go yes indeed according to the many sources ukraine took the ground in this region and before ukraine got the success over here near to Robotina propelling forward to Nova Prokopovka but Russia has the south vector on the south also from Verbova. Their main objective is to reach at least this defense line that was previously used by Russians and secure their forces at this particular perimeter but Ukrainian army doesn't allow Russian forces to do so. So we have some sort of the double directional attack from Ukrainian side and from the Russian side with a similar success I would say. Russia used some of the artillery to stop our forces advancement towards Verbova or on the north from Verbova Russians do have the artillery shell superiority over Ukraine. The ratio is 1 to 6, something around that, and they continue to receive the artillery from the North Korea and Iran. Plus, Iran will supply the ballistic missiles to the Russian Federation. Those missiles haven't been used in this war so far, but Russia will use them, and I believe on the front lines as well. The Ukrainian forces' advancement on the south is not the single good news we have for now. Let's go to the other direction of the front lines but before we go to it let me tell you about the long-term partner and also the sponsor of my channel the Atlas VPN. They have the super deal that is valid just for my followers where you may get the Atlas VPN premium just for 149 per month plus you'll obtain 12 months extra. This offer is the best available on the market right now from all of the VPN services and believe me I use Atlas VPN for a very long time almost two years and I'm very satisfied with this product. Using the Atlas VPN I may change my virtual location and may call from any kind of country as well as Netflix. Some of the content is not available for some of the countries so using Atlas VPN may open you new borders for the streaming services as Netflix. And by changing your virtual location on Atlas VPN, you may purchase the airline ticket with great discount as well as booking apartments for your holidays somewhere. And now, my friends, please check out my personal link or scan the QR code available somewhere on the screen, probably below, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with a super discount that was made especially for my followers. Just $149 per month plus 12 months extra. Astonishing deal and it is time limited, so hurry up to join the club. Now let's go to Crimina direction for you to understand where is it. So here is the Bakhmut city, here is Lysychansk and Syrodonetsk somewhere here and Crimina area is the place where there are lots of the woods, rivers and lakes. So let's go for it. Here we have the vector of the Russian assault towards Terni and Yampelivka which is under Ukrainian control and those are very important Ukrainian defense hubs with a road connecting those settlements and today Ukraine went on its own counterattack to the place so let's delete everything of that and let's check the timeline so it was yesterday and it is today ukraine pushed russian army away from the place if we check out this 3d map you may see that there is no recent update for this one and i just want to show you the terrain in this place so russia actually has the advantage because they keep high terrain under control and it's going down towards those lakes and those terrain drops over here i believe that there are some of the small rivers in the place could be used as the natural trenches for Ukrainian or for the Russian armies. So probably Ukraine advanced from those places towards the Russian positions, pushing them away. It shows that Russia is still unable to reach their goals even with that huge advantage of the military resources. What Ukraine does nowadays on the front lines is just a miracle heroism which marks the outstanding motivation of Ukrainian soldiers to liberate Ukrainian lands. We have a single video coming from the Crimea direction where Ukrainian army is using the FPV drones to stop the Russian advancement. Yes, the quality is not there. That great but from other perspective you may see that the russian armored vehicle is on fire so the russian attack was stopped they were forced to retreat so ukraine gained some of the more ground the awesome news do not want to end so before russia tried many of the attack attempts towards
Let's know a Mihailovka. We even start to call this road the road of death for the Russian army because they lost many of the convoys and today they tried to advance from the north because here it's not possible for them to go forward but here they also lost all of their troops, forces, vehicles etc. It was a huge demolishment of the Russian army. Why? Because there are lots of the mines on the fields. Plus Ukraine continued to use FPV drones with western made artillery shells attached to them. And taking the advantage Ukraine started to propel from this direction quite successfully liberating the ground. We may see it over here, so demolished Russian convoy with many of the tanks, infantry vehicles and infantry itself, and successful Ukrainian counterattack with infantry forces directly into this place, cutting the vector of attack of the Russian army. The tactical advantage in Novy Mihailovka sector still belongs to Ukraine. Just 10 days ago, Ukraine was successfully able to push Russian forces away from Novy Mihailovka city with a great counterattack. Now the distance between this settlement of Novy Mihailovka to the Russian controlled territory is almost two miles, which is quite a lot. Before Russians were just at the border of this village or you may call it a small town. And here we have the advancement of the Russian convoy near to Nova Mihalivka. First tank was disabled and the rest of the machines were under Ukrainian fire too. The storm group is running away with losses. Awesome. And here we go with other Russian convoy that was demolished by Ukrainian FPV drones. Yes, sorry again about the poor video quality, but they all gone on this hell road. But the good news are not over. Today something outstanding happened. Ukraine launched the HIMARS attack on the Russian base in Ilovaisk. There was the drone school of the Russian army. So what happened to it you may see on this particular video complete demolishment of the Russian base. Russia as reported lost at least 24 of the officers and soldiers in this training facility. We have the confirmation about it also from the Russian military bloggers. Should we share our condolences? I would share just my joy. So those are the Russian channels. They say that 24 of the Russian military lost their lives under Ilovaisk because of the Ukrainian Hamas attack at 3 p.m. And we have many of the reports from the other channels. Hamas is probably one of the scariest words for the Russian army. By the way, France will deliver more of their rocket artillery systems to Ukraine. We are speaking about M270 LRU systems. We already have four of those, so they promise more that will increase the total quality to six units and we need them a lot because during the winter time it's better to use those systems they have caterpillars so better off-road capability it seems like awesome news do not want to stop one of the russian boat facilities totally ruined in krasnoyarsk because someone smoked at the wrong place they were producing the flat bottom boats alligators russian forces could have used those in Kherson direction where it is more convenient to use boats to move between positions and for supplies. Let's go back to the military map for a moment. Here in Avdiivka we don't have any more changes for today, but we see that Russia moved their forces to this place using underground tunnels. As I said to you already in my previous video, I think that this advancement of the Russian army is temporary. They are not able to move there with their huge big forces and also with armored vehicles, so they may stay there for some time, but later on will be forced to retreat. It's just my prediction. I'm not the military expert or something, but it's just my logic. However, some of the Ukrainian experts say that Russia accumulated 40,000 soldiers to get Avdiivka under control. They are now searching for the weak spots in Ukrainian defense to start one more massive attack. Well, I heard about this for a very long time, but I do not see one more huge attack where Russia would use many of the convoys. I think because they have kind of the bad experience with Ukrainian defense that totally demolishes their convoys. About the Illusion 76 Russian airplane that was downed yesterday, Russia finally showed the impact 
But what you may see that indeed there was the huge impact, some of the debris, and they even show some of the bodies that I'm unable to show you on this platform. But they continue to show mostly a single body and some of the body parts, not many. If we compare it with any kind of the footage from any kind of the crash scene, for example, with commercial aircraft where there were many of the passengers, obviously bodies were lying all around. And according to the information cams from the Belgorod morgue, there were just five bodies delivered. So after almost two days, Russia managed to post those kind of videos, again showing no direct evidence that there were Ukrainian POWs on board of the Russian Illusion airplane. I might also speculate a little about the case that indeed those Illusions were used to deliver Ukrainian POWs, but later on took off from Belgorod flying back. Indeed, if Russia even presents some of the bodies after this long time, two days, I wouldn't believe it without the real DNA test with the relatives. The Kremlin spokesman Peskov also said a couple of words about the Illusion 76 case. He said that it is not yet entirely clear what happened. Only yesterday investigators began examining the remains of the airplane. What can we talk about now? So indeed Russia is in lack of the direct evidence that there were indeed Ukrainian prisoners of war on board of this particular airplane. They totally lost with their yesterday's propaganda. Now there are no any mentions about Illusion 76 case in the Russian media or in the social media. Many of the Russian military bloggers, however, were very angry about the case. Some even proposed the crazy conspiracy theories that Ukraine negotiated with Russia about the case, not to tell the information about the evidence. So, never trust them. The war criminal Strelkov Girkin today got four years in Russian prison. Not a lot, but enough for Putin to put him away from the Russian political life, at least for that term. But something tells me that it's not very safe for Strelkov to stay in a prison. Reason. Maybe he might join the Storm Z prisoners battalion. If he joins it, he might fight for a very long time because Putin cancelled the agreement with the Russian prisoners. So before they had to serve for around six months and were free to go to the Russian society, but now they have to stay until the end of the SBO, special military operation, as, as Russia calls this war. And prisoners are not okay with this new feature, but who would ask them? Come on. Ukraine is using the remote mining tools to eliminate the supply lines for the Russian army. So just recently I showed you this video that Ukraine damaged the bridge, the connection road for the Russian army forces, and it was done with the help of this small vehicle. So it went under the road and exploded. The total vehicle losses for both of the sides for the last three days. Well, Russia lost 180 of the vehicles, Ukraine lost 62. So the ratio is 1 to 3. In Avdivka town, it's 1 to 10, sometimes 1 to 12. Russia is losing lots of the tanks, BMPs and artillery systems. Ukraine is using the FPV drones more effectively nowadays, but Russia continued to use the Lancet drones. I can see at least three of the positions where Lancet demolished the Ukrainian vehicles, unfortunately, and one artillery system was damaged. What surprises me a lot that Russian soldiers abandoned their vehicles. You can see how many of those were abandoned. We are speaking about the Russian tanks and also about the Russian BMPs and infantry fighting vehicles. In Ukrainian army, it happens just occasionally. So why is it happening like that? Because Russian soldiers do afraid to stay in the Russian tanks if they are under the fire, because there are lots of the shells around the crew because of this automatic reloading system. So just not to be evaporized just in case they're leaving their vehicles. What are you? Well, I know what it is. It is the Chinese made golf car which they supply to the Russian army and the Russians put the drone defense at the same time there is no any defense for example over here so this could be used only against the drone drops with a quite limited effectiveness let's say but fpv drone would obviously destroy those kind of the vehicles even with this huge protection from the russian side some of the media sources agreed that the strategy of ukraine to cut the russian oil supplies works well even better compared to the western-made sanctions because at least two of the russian main oil ports stop its operation 
operation for a while because Ukraine has some drones that are able to reach even St. Petersburg more than 1000 kilometers away from Ukrainian border. So I expect more of those attacks to happen in the nearby future. On my personal opinion, this is the best Russian armor of their vehicles the active moving defense. No any army uses it in their vehicles, but Russia does. Very, very effective. Orban, what is happening with you? Why did you betray yourself? According to the information from the media sources, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban is likely to leave the veto on the transfer of 50 billion euros to Ukraine. Probably his blackmailing doesn't work any longer, does it? Bloomberg came out with the article that Putin sends some of the signals to the United States and allies on Ukraine talks. In the article they say that Putin is okay even if Ukraine joins NATO, but Putin doesn't want to give the territories back to Ukraine which were occupied by the Russian forces. Well, I don't really think that this article is really legit because Putin sends the other signals. He wants to occupy more of the ground and they put lots of the territories into their constitutional territory of the Russian Federation, so they will never stop until reaching at least that point and their goal is to accumulate more forces and to finally conquer Ukraine and put their puppet government in Kyiv. It's the dream, that dream of Putin. Where did Bloomberg get the information about Putin's signals? I'm out of clue. Oh, this is funny Russian propaganda. They say that Ukraine wants to buy some of the uranium from Niger to create nuclear weaponry. <laughs> the thing that Ukraine itself has lots of the uranium, that much that we constantly export it to the other countries. Uranium is not the problem for Ukraine. The problem is that we lost our nuclear status. Ukraine had the third biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. But some of the countries asked Ukraine to give it up for security guarantees. Where are those guarantees? No one knows. Nepal asks Russia to send back its citizens to Nepal because there are at least 200 Nepalese fighting for the Russian army and there are some of the losses. They lost at least 10 of those. Oh sorry, 14 were total loss from the Nepal part of the Russian army. Basically Nepalese are going to the Russian army to earn quite a lot of funds that they would never earn in Nepal. NATO has been underestimating Russia's war machine. Indeed, Russia is still capable to produce lots of the military tools, lots of the tanks, artillery. They have their allies, so with their military and combined forces they are a very tough enemy. Nevertheless, as I showed you today, Ukraine still is able to achieve success in this hard situation. Yes, logically now Russia pushes more because they have many of the resources, but the motivation of the army is also playing a great role even in a modern day conflict. Also, I don't think that Russia will be capable to break through Ukrainian new defense lines, which Ukraine actively builds on the eastern part of Ukraine. This is kind of the usual drone video you might say, but no, it isn't. It is the FPV drone attack during the night time using the thermal camera. And this is the Ukrainian drone. Let's see how the scene looks from the other normal camera from the different drone perspective. So here we go, complete night time and just kaboom. But our guys are able to spot Russian vehicles and Russians themselves during the night time. Yes, obviously the drones with thermal cameras are way more expensive, but they may eliminate the Russian vehicles than Russians do not expect. Still, most of the drone attacks are happening during the daytime. And here is what usually happens to the Russian officers on the south direction. This is the portrait of the Russian paratroop commander who lost his life in this war. Before that sad event, he promised his kid to deliver laptop from Ukraine, probably taking it from some of the Ukrainian family. His son didn't forget, not about his father, but about the laptop, and he wrote the letter to Santa Claus, but Russians do not call Santa Claus a Santa Claus, they call him Old Man Frost, like a nickname of some of the alcoholic. So Kid wrote the letter and sent it to Santa Claus, but somehow the letter went to the commander of his 
father. Russian General Teplinsky, who got the letter from the son, a guy who sent the father to die in Ukraine. But he decided to pay at least with something, so he turned himself into the old man Frost. Definitely, he went to meet with a kid and he presented him a new laptop, probably also from Ukraine. Oh, I also have Acer now. So the Russian family with how many? Four kids lost the father and they're happy about Acer laptop that was presented to one of the kids by the killer of the husband. Really, total cringe, but this video shows that Russia is losing their officers. Happy New Year! My friends, don't forget to press your huge big like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also don't forget to check my personal link in the video description just below, where you may find the Atlas VPN with a huge discount, super discount, that was made especially for my followers. So if you want to support my channel, please click on that link. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.